Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XR Terra. And in this module, we're going to be talking about prefabs in Unity. So what is a prefab? What a prefab is, is a saved asset of a game object. So it's basically a way to save a game object. Normally you use game objects in your scene hierarchy, but you can drag that game object from the scene hierarchy into your project window to essentially save a copy of this game object for use in other parts of your project or to duplicate this game object as much as you want, either before you start playing or you can instantiate during runtime. The prefab asset basically is, a, it functions as a template. When you think you're going to need more than one instance of an object, or if you want to have a whole bunch of slight variations on an object within your scene, such as, for example, you know, you might have a prefab for a tree and you just put a bunch of the same tree into your scene. It saves on optimization. Maybe you just rotate them a little bit to make them not all look the same. Maybe you have a prefab for projectiles, right? Because the enemy has to throw projectiles at you and the enemy has infinite projectiles. They're not going and finding them. They just kind of spawn one in and then throw one at you. That might be a prefab. Anytime you're going to be using a lot of the same object, it is often a good idea to make that object a prefab asset. An important difference in editing prefab assets is there's a difference between editing the prefab asset itself that exists in your project window and editing a prefab instance that exists in your scene. Once you have a prefab asset in the project window, if you want to make a change to all instances of a prefab, then you edit that asset directly. But if you just want to have a whole bunch of variations on a prefab, then you just edit an instance in the scene. So you can have like 50 different instances of the prefab. You edit one of them to, you know, make some change that doesn't necessarily apply them to all the other prefabs unless you purposefully do that. So we're actually going to leave the slides for a second, actually go into Unity where I can give you a demonstration. So I've got myself XR Terry. XR Terry is a character that I've made out of primitive objects. So I've got just basically there's a body capsule. There's two arms made of capsules. There's two eyes made of cubes. Most of these use textures that I just happen to have because of the default sample scene. I guess I just kind of messed around and put together this character. But what if I want to, say, have many XR Terry's? I don't want just one. I want to be able to save XR Terry and use XR Terry in different parts of my project. I don't want to use it in just the scene. I might want to use it in a whole bunch of other scenes as well. Maybe XR Terry is the main character of my game. Um, in order for me to uh, save XR Terry as a prefab asset, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my assets folder and create a new prefabs folder just for the sake of organization. So I create a prefabs folder in my assets folder um, in the product window. And then what I do is I click and drag XR Terry from the hierarchy into the prefabs folder. Boom. And you'll notice that as soon as I do that, XR Terry in the hierarchy turns blue. Normal game objects have this white box outline, but prefabs have a solid color blue and the text of prefabs uh, turns blue in the hierarchy. And this is to help you actually understand which of your game objects are just normal game objects and which of them are tied to some sort of asset in the project window. So. We've created XR Terry as a prefab. That means if I want to drag in another XR Terry, I can. I can just click and drag XR Terry from the project window into here. What I may want to do is move this guy because it is a duplicate. So they spawn in kind of right on top of each other. I'm going to go ahead and move this guy a little bit back. Um, I'll drag another one, a third one, and I'll, I'll move them over here. So we've got a kind of little squad of XR Terries ready to invade our world. Maybe they're the enemy. The idea is this has made it really easy for us to drag in and instantiate copies of XR Terry. Maybe I want to give all of these XR Terries some sort of change. Maybe I want to make one of their eyes bigger or something. If I want to edit the prefab, there's a couple of ways to do it. The first and most direct way is to go into the project window click on the XR Terry prefab asset. And in the inspector, you'll notice that you see the root game object of XR Terry. But of course the root game object of XR Terry doesn't have any components on it. All of the components and, and things that I might want to change are a child of XR Terry. So simply clicking on XR Terry isn't enough. When I select XR Terry in the project window, I will then go into the inspector and select open 
prefab. So open prefab, instead of just giving me access to the root game object, it'll actually create a new kind of section in the hierarchy. My hierarchy no longer is the scene hierarchy. Instead, it's the hierarchy of my prefab. So now we're just kind of taking a closer look at the structure of the prefab of XR Terry. And like I said, I, I wanted to what make a make a change to, I guess, one of the eyes here. How about this, I'm going to select I1, and I'm going to make this this one a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 0.5, um, 0.5, and maybe I make it 0.5 high. I think that'll work a little bit better. There we go. I'll hit enter, and then what should happen is if I go back into the scene, and the way that I go back into the scene is in the hierarchy, there where it says XR Terry, there's a little arrow here that I can click on in order to go back into my scene. And now I can see that because I've changed the XR Terry prefab asset, all of the XR Terrys in my scene have a big I. So that's one way to access the prefab. If I select XR Terry in the hierarchy and I look in the inspector, I'll find that there's a new set of buttons that isn't here on a normal game object, right? If I click on the main camera, it doesn't have that set of prefab buttons. But when I click on XR Terry, um, there's a section for prefab specific buttons. If I wanted to know where this prefab was stored, I could click anywhere in the project window. And then on XR Terry in the inspector, I hit the select button and it teleports or it snaps my project window to the location of XR Terry. Or if I click on XR Terry in the hierarchy, I can just hit the open button on the prefab. And when I click on it, it opens up the XR Terry prefab editing mode. But you'll notice it actually is a little bit different. It actually shows a little bit of the scene behind it. And that's because I opened XR Terry from within a scene. So it actually gives me context of where XR Terry is. So I can see kind of how, how the changes I'm making might influence the scene or, or work in the scene that the, the prefab is in. Yeah, so I, I could make changes here. I've, I've already made a change. I've made one eye bigger. So, but that's one way for me to access this editing mode. And again, this editing mode is how to edit the prefab asset itself. However, what if I wanted to give all of these XR Terries a sword and I wanted to start by doing that on one of the XR Terries, just so I have like a little bit of control. One thing I can do is I'm just going to go ahead and make a game object, a child game object, going to add a game object as a child of XR Terry. I'm going to create, I don't know, what do I want? A cylinder? Maybe it'll be like a, a, a stick a walking stick or something. Here, let's make this 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So XR Terriers are going to have a walking stick. I'm actually going to give them a, a, a brick material. It's going to be a brick walking stick, I guess. Uh, you can barely even tell, too. You'll notice when I add a game object to this XR Terry in the hierarchy, that game object is not colored blue. And in fact, it's got a white outline box next to it that has a little plus sign on it. What this icon means is that this game object is not actually a part of the prefab asset yet. It's something that's been added onto it, but isn't a part of the prefab asset. Similarly to the way this game object has a white outline with a plus icon, if I was to actually add a component onto XR Terry into the inspector that isn't on the prefab asset, let's say I'm just going to add, I don't know, the XR grab interactable. Let's say I wanted to be able to grab XR Terry. You'll notice that we've got this little icon on that component, the little same plus icon on the grab interactable and rigid body component that tells us that, again, this is a component that doesn't exist on the actual prefab asset. And similarly, if I was to like remove a component, let's say I remove a capsule collider from my body capsule, rather than just removing it, it'll actually show me basically the ghost of that component. It'll give me, it's like, hey, there was a capsule collider here, and then it has a little minus sign next to it. And it's telling basically, hey, um, that prefab asset has a capsule collider here, but you removed it on this specific instance. And if I want to undo this change, all I really have to do is click on the three dots here where I get this uh, this kind of message that says, on the removed component, do you want to apply this to the prefab XR Terry or do you want to revert? So in my case, I'm going to revert. And when I revert, it'll actually bring me back that component. So now that I've got this game object on, if I wanted to give this walking stick to all the other XR Terries, there's a couple of ways for me to apply 
changes to one prefab to the rest of them. I'm going to show the last button here in the inspector. When I select Xartery, the prefab, this last section over here, this drop down called overrides, when I click on it, it shows me all of the changes that have been made to Xartery, and I can select each change and either apply it or revert it. So just to, to kind of drive this point home, let's do something else. Let's actually change one of the eyes to use a different material. We'll, we'll create a new material and I'll say I two, and I'll put this onto here and I'll, I'll make this, uh, I'm just gonna choose some random, some random, yeah, that's a cool, cool enough texture. And now that I've applied this second material onto the eye, I can go click on XR Terry and in the overrides, you'll see in addition to the cylinder that I've added, it's also found that the mesh render has a different material on it. So when I select the mesh render, it'll see right here, it's like, oh, hey, just letting you know, I too has been changed. And by the way, anytime you make a change in the inspector, a blue line will appear next to it um, in the inspector to let you know that this is a property that has deviated from the prefab asset, right? It's unlinked from the prefab asset. So if I want to apply these changes to the rest of the XR Terry's that we've got here, then what I would do is I would click on XR Terry. I could go to overrides and I can say apply all. And then when I do that, all the XR Terry will get a walking stick and all of them will have this new eye. And whenever I make a change, you'll notice that it, it actually makes the property bold to make it a little bit easier to, to see. And I can even like, if I, right now you can see in the transform, it's, it's not bold, but if I make a change to the position, you'll notice the Y property gets bold and then the X property property gets bold and then I can make the Z property become bold. Um, I'm probably going to make some, so I'm probably going to, yeah, this, this is probably about good. You'll notice that because the, I changed things in the position, the position property has become unlinked from the prefab asset. I can either apply this change to the prefab asset, or I can just leave the change as I want. When you make a change in the inspector, it no longer listens to the prefab asset. So um, if, for example, I decide that checking this is trigger box was a bad idea, and I go ahead and uncheck this box again, um, it does not actually relink with the prefab asset. So right now, if I click on this XR Terry's I2, for example, this XR Terry's I2, it doesn't have is trigger checked. And this one doesn't have is trigger checked either, but is trigger is bold. What that means is if I go onto the actual asset, if I go onto the asset and I go to I2 and I check is trigger, then all of the ones that I didn't mess with will have is trigger checked. Um, and XR Terry 2, for example, those eyes will have is trigger checked. But the I2 on my XR Terry 1 won't have it checked. And that's because the property has become desynced. So anything that you change in the inspector becomes desynced from the prefab asset until you revert the change. And the way that you can revert a change is by right clicking on a property and either, you know, you can either apply this change to the prefab asset or you can say revert. And when I hit reverse, so right now it's unchecked. When I hit revert, it'll then relink that property with the prefab asset. And on the prefab assets, it's like, oh, this I is a trigger. Okay, so let's check that box. One of the most common things to become unlinked is the position of the prefab, right? The reason these aren't all in the same place is because I made some changes to the position. And so normally when I make change, if I was to like apply this position to the prefab XR Terry, if I wanted to, and I could, but you will notice that it won't actually move these XR Terry's because they've already unlinked themselves from the position property of our prefab. And so they don't really care what the prefab says about position. They have their own position in the scene and that's what they're going to stick to. What if I decide that I don't want this walking stick? If I select this cylinder and I try and delete it, you'll find that it tells you you cannot restructure a prefab instance. Children of a prefab instance cannot be deleted or moved and components cannot be reordered. In order for me to make a change like that, in order to like delete this cylinder, I'd actually have to open up the prefab asset before I can make those changes. So this is this applies not only to deleting the cylinder, for example, but also maybe if I wanted to make the eyes a child of the body capsule, I can't restructure the transform relationship. So I can't reparent or unparent anything in inside the prefab asset that can only be done when 
on the actual prefab asset. I'd have to actually open the prefab asset before I could start doing things like deleting the cylinder, right? Now, when I delete the cylinder, everyone loses their cylinder. That's how you can delete objects. You, you can't delete objects from an instance of a prefab asset. You can only delete them from the prefab asset itself. Let's say, for example, I have this copy of Xartari and I really want to like move some stuff around or I just, I don't actually care about having it linked to the prefab. I just want a copy of the game object and I want to do fun stuff to it. Well, if I want to unlink the game object from the prefab asset, all I really have to do is right click on XR Terry, and there's a section called prefab that's only available on prefab game objects. And when I hover over it, I can choose unpack. And what unpack does is it basically turns this prefab asset into just the set of game objects that's on it. So it is no longer attached to any prefab asset. I can readjust or re like reparent things as much as I want without worry. But if I make any changes on XR Terry, they won't be applied to this game object. I basically unlinked it completely. You may wonder what unpack completely means. That's basically, you can actually have prefabs be um, part of other prefabs, right? If I wanted to say, like, if I wanted to turn I'm just going to create, I'm just going to call this XR Terry holder. If I wanted to turn XR Terry holder into its own prefab, I could, and I'll do that right now. I'll just drag XR Terry into here. And now I have a prefab XR Terry holder. If I was to unpack this prefab, it would just unpack the XR Terry holder prefab, but it wouldn't unpack all of the child prefabs. But if I undo that and I instead select unpack completely then it unpacks all this is now all just game objects everything has lost its connection to any prefab asset so now it's all just game objects and i can mess around with it as much as i want so the next thing i'm going to do is show you how to save variants of a prefab we've got ourselves a prefab we have three instances of our prefab what if i want to make xr terry 2 a little bit more special what if we have this is an example of like what do we have like variations on our enemies right we have the normal enemies and then this one enemy is super special because he has a cool hat so i'm going to give xr terry to a cool hat is what i'm going to do i'm going to create i guess a, a cylinder i would imagine yeah we'll make it a super thin cylinder and then move it up here it'll be the that'll be the base of of the hat and then i'll, I'll make another one but make it a child and, and we're going to make it a little bit smaller i guess so 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. We're going to raise it up. So this is going to be our hat. I'm even going to make the hat a, a cool color, I think. Uh, let me just create a material hat, um, and we'll we'll make the hat look a little bit better. Maybe we'll make it look, I don't know, yellow or something. There. So we have a little yellow hat on this XR Terry. And if I want to save this XR Terry as a variant of the prefab, that means it's... It, it, maintains its link to the original prefab, but it has a little bit extra on it. I could save this XR Terry 2 by basically dragging this XR Terry 2 into the project window, and it'll ask me, would you like to create a new original prefab or a variant of this prefab? So I always have the option of just being like, yeah, this is its own prefab, right? Don't link them together. But if I say make a prefab variant, then any changes I make to the XR Terry asset will actually also apply to my variant, right? So the other XR Terrys don't get a hat. This is a variant. It's a it's a deviation basically from the prefab asset. But if I open up the original XR Terry, I opened up that, and let's say I I make a change like oh I don't know making this eye rotate forty five degrees, and uh, maybe not that way, maybe along the Z axis. There we go. We'll have it be 45 degrees here. Then I go back into Unity and I'll see that my variant also got those changes applied to it as well. And in fact, if I open up the prefab variant asset, I'll actually see that in the prefab editing hierarchy, there's text in blue, which is part of the original XR Terry prefab. And then there's game objects whose text is white. And that's all the stuff that I've added onto the prefab that aren't part of the original prefab. This is the stuff that makes it a variant. And of course, I can make changes to like, you know, the eyes, I can make changes to the material and et cetera. And those will be stored as part of the prefab variant. 
but not as part of the original prefab asset. But it gives me a lot of flexibility. Like, for example, if, you know, I put some sort of enemy script onto these guys and I want to change parameters for all enemies, then it'll change the parameters for all enemies, including the variants. If I just select the original XR Terry and I, you know, make some change on them, it'll apply to all of the different variants. So that's prefabs, how to edit prefabs, how to apply changes using this overrides button, apply or reject, and how to create a prefab variant. And the, the next modules we'll talk about actually instantiating these through code. But for now, this is basically the, the idea behind prefabs. See you in the next module.